modern U.S. politics, this day is one for the books. A culmination of the last 28 days since Biden's standing started going downhill. Let's now trace events that led Biden to back down. The first presidential debate on July 27th was a turning point of sorts. After the fumbles and cornering, polls showed that 60% of voters had no confidence in Biden's ability. The president returned to the campaign trail the very next day with stops in North Carolina and New York. Biden also headed to the Hamptons and New Jersey for fundraisers. He then asserted at Camp David, where his family, including First Lady Jill Biden, encouraged him to stay in the race. Amid growing uncertainty over his re-election bid, former U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi raised questions over Biden's future. She said, it's a legitimate question of whether it is an episode or a condition. On the same day, Texas Representative Lloyd Dodgett became the first sitting Democratic member of Congress to call on Biden to withdraw. The next day, amid growing calls urging him to quit, Biden met with Democratic governors in a high-stakes White House meeting. As America celebrated the 4th of July, Biden sat for an interview with Milwaukee radio station. It was in that very interview that he admitted for the first time that he screwed up in quotes. The next day, Biden was interviewed by ABC News. Biden had said that only the Lord Almighty could convince him to drop from the race. On July 8th, Biden se sent a defiant letter to congressional Democrats saying he is firmly committed to staying in this race till the end. Biden then proceeded to host the NATO summit for the next few days. Defections within the, within the Democratic camp continued throughout the high-stakes summit. The most prominent of the calls were from heavyweights Nancy Pelosi and George Clooney. While Pelosi declined to say directly whether Biden had her support, the top fundraiser said, we are not going to win in November with this president. Soon after, Peter Welch also came aboard the dissent train, first Democratic senator to publicly call on Biden to ditch his re-election bid. In response to the growing calls, Biden held a highly anticipated solo news conference. He opened the door to possibilities that would make him drop out, saying he would consider doing so if data showed that he cannot win. But the highlight was Biden's fresh issues within the course of that one day. He called Kamala Harris Vice President Trump and introduced Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky as President Putin. Soon after, reports started to emerge of former U.S. President Barack Obama privately expressing concerns about Biden. On July 12th, as he campaigned so, in Michigan, he put forward yet another condition for quitting. In an interview, he said he's committed to staying in the race unless he gets hit by a train. Remember, he said this less than 10 days ago and is no longer in the race now. I was the second youngest man ever elected. On July 13th, his rival Donald Trump was injured in an assassination attempt at his Pennsylvania rally. Biden denounced the attack before heading to the White House late in the evening. Biden then moved to Las Vegas for yet another interview where he said that only a medical condition would convince him to drop out of the race. And he faced a medical block the very next day. After the interview, Biden tested positive for COVID-19 and went to isolate at his home in Delaware. Two days ago, as Biden found himself isolated even among Democrats, his campaign chair said that the president is absolutely staying in the race and is more committed than ever to defeat Trump. And just hours ago, after multiple promises of staying in the race and even more reassuring instances, Biden has announced that he will not seek re-election. The pressure had its way.